The Governance of China, Volume 2, Audiobook, Part 22. Strengthen the Armed Forces Through Reform, November 24, 2015, Main Points of the Speech at a Meeting of the Central Military Commission on Reforming the Armed Forces. Driving deeper reform in national defense and the military is a call of the times to realize the Chinese dream, as well as a strong military dream, a sure path to a strong military, and a crucial step for the future of our armed forces. We need to carry out the party's goal of building a strong military under the prevailing conditions, call on the armed forces and related sectors to carry out the strategy of strengthening the armed forces through reform with full confidence, united in will, thought, and action, and keep resolutely to the path of strengthening the armed forces with Chinese features. The history of the People's Army is one of reform and innovation. Under the leadership of the party, the armed forces have gone from small to large, from weak to strong, and from victory to victory without ever slowing the pace of reform and innovation. The reason why the armed forces have stayed vigorous is that they have kept pace with the times and maintained a commitment to reform. Now, as the country progresses from a large country to a large and powerful one, National defense and military development stands at a new and historic starting line. We must take into account the broader international picture, size up our own conditions, and properly deal with the profound and complicated changes in the world. We must uphold and develop socialism with Chinese characteristics, advance the four-pronged strategy, implement the goal of building strong armed forces and the military strategies and policies, and fulfill our military missions and tasks. All these require us to have greater wisdom and courage for deeper reform in defense and the military. All officials and people pay close attention to defense and military reform and give it their active support while army officers and soldiers firmly support such reform with warm expectation. In general, both subjective and objective conditions are favorable for deeper defense and military reform. It is a rare opportunity. We need to understand the general requirements for reform. The guiding principles for reform include the essence of the party's 18th National Congress and the 3rd, 4th, and 5th plenary sessions of the 18th CPC Central Committee, Marxism-Leninism, Mao Zedong Thought, Deng Xiaoping Theory, the Theory of the Three Represents, and the Scientific Outlook on Development. Following the requirements of the four-pronged strategy, with building a strong military in the new era as the party's goal, we will carry out our military strategies, work to break down institutional, structural, and policy barriers, modernize the organization of the armed forces, and further unleash the combat capacity and vigor of the armed forces. By doing so, we will build strong national defense and armed forces that are commensurate with China's international status and in compliance with national security and development interests, which will provide a strong guarantee for realizing the two centenary goals and the Chinese dream. To understand the above guiding principles, we should follow the party's goal of building a strong military and review, guide, and promote defense and military reform with this goal. To realize this goal, the CMC has, since the 18th CPC National Congress, made overall plans for building revolutionary modern and standardized armed forces, coordinated the building and use of military forces, planned for economic development and improvement in national defense, 
created military strategies and policies in the new era, put forward a series of major policies and principles, and made a series of major decisions and plans. Through reform, we will carry out these strategic plans and designs well, so as to provide a powerful driving force and an institutional guarantee for realizing our goal of building a strong military. To meet the political requirements of building the military in the current era, we will integrate the leadership of the armed forces with efficient command. To this end, a new structure will be established in which the CMC takes charge of the overall administration of the People's Liberation Army, PLA, the Chinese People's Armed Police, the Militia, and Reserve Forces, where military theater commands focus on combats, and where different military services pursue their own development. We need to maintain the correct political direction, outline a series of institutional designs and arrangements to consolidate and improve the basic principle under which the party has a absolute leadership of the armed forces and the systems that support it, and strengthen the CMC's centralized and unified leadership to ensure that the CPC Central Committee exercises overall leadership over the military and the CMC exercises combat command. We will design measures to integrate the administrative system and the joint battle command system and establish a three-tier CMC Theater Command Troops Command System and a CMC Services Troops Administration System. Major measures include Modify the system of the CMC headquarters and establish multiple departments. Set up a general command center for the Army and improve the administrative system of all branches and services of the armed forces. Regroup current regional military commands into theater commands and establish a joint battle command organization under each military theater command. And improve the CMC's joint combat command organization. To run the military by law and enforce strict discipline, we need to focus on regulating power within the military, which demands a strict system to confine and supervise the use of power. Decision-making, enforcement, and supervisory powers should be separated and assigned in the principle of mutual checks and coordination. It is paramount to address the issue that discipline enforcement and inspection, auditing, and judicial supervision processes of the military are not sufficiently independent and authoritative so as to eradicate the breeding grounds of corruption by means of stricter rules and systems. A new Discipline Inspection Commission will be established within the CMC, and disciplinary inspectors will be sent to CMC departments and theater commands in order to carry out the dual leadership system of the Discipline Inspection Commission. The CMC will reorganize the audit office, and the system of resident audit will be fully carried out. A new political and legal affairs commission will be set up under the CMC, the military judicial system will be adjusted, and military courts and procuratorates will be set up based on geographical areas to ensure independent and fair exertion of judicial power. We will optimize the size, structure, and composition of our troops for higher quality and efficiency with the aim of building an elite fighting force. Following the principle of streamlining the military and enhancing efficiency, we will cut troop numbers by 300,000 and downsize administrative and non-combat personnel in the military to make the armed forces smaller but more efficient. The proportion and structure of forces among different services will be streamlined and the composition will be reformed to suit new security needs and operations so that the military will be complete in organization 
well composed, more flexible in composition, and with a broader range of competencies. An efficiency-centered revolution of the military's management will be rolled out to establish modern ideas, improve the system, and optimize the process so that the Army is managed more professionally, meticulously, and scientifically. We need to occupy the strategic commanding heights in future military rivalries, give full play to innovation-driven development, and promote new ideas to drive the Army's fighting capability. Developing defense, science, and technology is a basic but pioneering project. We need to identify the right breakthrough points, plan ahead, explore and pilot research in both major technologies and new concepts with foresight, actively seek a competitive edge in military technologies, and improve combat effectiveness with innovation. We need to better develop, manage, and use military personnel and promote systematic reform and policy innovation for personnel development so as to bring about a situation where capable people come forth in large numbers and everyone can display his or her talents. While upholding the party's leadership over the management of officials and competent personnel, we should improve human resource classification, integrate management functions of human resources, and strengthen collective and unified management of military personnel so that the military's human resources can help improve the Army's capability in combat. We will carry out deeper reform in military academies and improve the new system for cultivating military personnel consisting of school education, field training, and vocational education. We will further reform management systems for officers, soldiers, and non-combat personnel, as well as systems of medical care, insurance, housing, and payments for servicemen. We will improve policies and systems for the human resources and logistics of the military, and establish policies and systems that can showcase professional characteristics of military members and strengthen the sense of honor and pride in servicemen. By doing so, we can better enhance morale and stabilize the forces. We should focus on civil-military integration, advance major reform tasks covering both military and civilian services, and promote integrated development of the economy and national defense. To break down institutional barriers for civil-military integration, we will work to establish an efficient organization and management system that is under unified leadership and enjoys coordination between the military and local authorities, a working system in which the state is the dominant force, demands are the driving force, and the market is the operating force, and a framework of policies and institutions with supporting measures and effective incentives. With these, we will be able to bring about a structure in which the military and non-military sectors develop together efficiently across multiple fields. We will improve the institutional framework for the militia and reserve forces, and the mobilization for national defense. We need to strengthen national management and relevant policies so as to provide improved services to veterans. The military must not engage in providing commercial services to the public. Deeper defense and military reform is an overhaul, a revolution, According to a timeline set in the overall plan, by 2020 we must complete overhauling the leadership and the joint command system and achieve concrete results in optimizing the scale and structure of the military, improving policies and systems, and promoting civil military integration. By that point, we should have in place modern military forces which are able to win the information war, effectively fulfill missions 
and tasks and further improve the military system with Chinese features. With a strong sense of history and of mission, and in a spirit of leaving a mark in the iron tools we clutch and footprints in the stones we tread, the whole armed forces should address this crucial battle of reform with determination and achieve results that will satisfy the party and the people. We will unify our thinking, continue our ideological and political work throughout the entire process of reform, and strengthen political awareness, consciousness of the overall situation, and the need to obey command at all levels of our troops. Enlisted officers and men should be guided to actively support and embrace the reform program. High-ranking military officers must take the lead in stressing political awareness, bearing in mind the general situation, observing discipline, promoting reform, striving to fulfill their duties, and resolutely defending the authority of the CPC Central Committee and the CMC in making plans for reform. To strengthen organizational leadership, party committees at all levels should consider it their political duty to implement reform initiatives. The principal leader of every party committee should be the first person responsible and the upper level should supervise each level below it. In party development, the military should ensure its smooth progress by designing tasks and measures with reform. To this end, we need to ensure corresponding security work, connect legislation with reform, and accelerate enactment, revision, abolition, and interpretation of rules and regulations, so that reform will progress along the path of rule of law and different levels operate in an orderly way in the new framework. For officers, we must make reasonable plans to decide their promotion transfer or removal, and pay attention to and address their practical problems. Veteran officers are valuable assets to the party and the armed forces. We shall work hard to ensure provision of services to them and secure their needs. At present, the CMC should focus on reform and leaders of all levels should plan, arrange, and encourage work in all sectors with reform as the main priority. We should step up efforts to implement the guiding principles of the Political Work Conference of the Armed Forces, improve working practices, continue the anti-corruption struggle, complete the follow-up of various inspections and clearing operations, and connect the advance of reform with the education on the three guidelines for ethical behavior and three basic rules of conduct. We will strengthen the management of the military and maintain its security and stability while making it unified and centralized in accordance with the new requirements that economic and social development has raised for national defense and the military, we will step up efforts to make the 13th five-year plan for army building and development. All party and state departments, party committees and governments at all local levels should have a stronger sense of the overall situation and regard supporting deeper reform of national defense and the military as their duty. For example, they can create special or preferential policies to arrange jobs for veterans and retiring military personnel. Through concerted efforts, the party, government, the military, and civilians will be able to carry out various tasks of national defense and military reform and make new progress in fully implementing the strategy of strengthening the armed forces through reform. Through all this, we will make a new and greater contribution to realizing the Chinese dream as well as a strong military dream. Deeper Civil Military Integration June 20th, 2017 Main Points of the Speech at the First Plenary Session 
of the Central Commission for Civil Military Integration. Upgraded as a national strategy, civil military integration is a major result of China's long-term endeavor to coordinate economic development with national defense. It is a strategic decision based on our overall national development and security interests, and a key measure to deal with complex security threats and gain national strategic advantage. It is of the utmost importance to strengthen centralized and unified leadership and uphold a holistic view of national security and the military strategic guideline with a problem-oriented approach in this new era. The top-level design should be an overall plan for the integrated use of infrastructure, key facilities, and resources based on essential requirements. Meanwhile, we should reform institutions and mechanisms, integrate military systems with concrete elements, and improve the general standards for both military and civilian development so as to put in place a comprehensive and highly efficient network of integration and build an integrated national strategic system and capability. This is a period of strategic opportunities for civil military integration. It is also a critical period for this integration to advance in scope and scale and achieve leapfrog development. This situation will prevail for some time to come. All departments concerned should seize the opportunity, broaden their vision, and accelerate high-quality integration. There are some, these are some of the key points. Unified leadership, further integration, innovative ideas, and in-depth cooperation. Deeper civil military integration must be based on our national and military conditions. We should blaze a trail of integration with Chinese characteristics. The concept, decisions, and plans of civil military integration must be fully implemented in all sectors of the economy and national defense and in all processes. Integration should bring into full play one of the key strengths of our socialist system, its efficiency in pooling resources to solve major problems, integration must combine state guidance with the role of the market and rally strength through proper planning, institutional innovation, policy support, and legal guarantees. The integration of military and civilian development can support and drive both national defense and economic and social development, which will ultimately maximize the comprehensive benefit to both sides. The ultimate approach to deeper civil military integration is reform and innovation. We should start with greater opening up and removal of self-imposed partitions to make breakthroughs in the reform of institutions and policies and reshape the system of integration and overall planning in key areas. Civil military integration must be combined with the strategy of innovation-driven development. The building of an innovation system for this integration has to be accelerated. Pilot innovation demonstration projects should be set up to expand the scale of civil military integration and explore new approaches. To further civil military integration, we must be legal-minded and promote our work within legal frameworks so that the relevant laws and regulations can regulate, guide, and safeguard the integration. Therefore, the enactment, revision, repeal, and interpretation of laws and regulations should be expedited accordingly. We should improve the institutional environment for the development of integration. Barriers should be dismantled. Obstacles must be overcome. Access thresholds must be reduced. Meanwhile, market access rules have to be improved. Our policies should encourage more competent enterprises, high-caliber talent, technology capital, and services to play a larger role in civil-military integration. 
To further civil military integration, we must focus on priority areas, since development in these areas will play a leading role in driving overall development. There is tremendous potential for civil military integration in such areas as infrastructure development, science, technology, and industry for national defense, weaponry, and equipment procurement, personnel training, outsourcing of military logistical support, and national defense mobilization. It is important to facilitate the integrated use of available resources and optimize the allocation of incremental resources so that we will be able to benefit to the full from integration. The concept and requirements of integrated military and civilian development should be implemented in such fields as oceans, outer space, cyberspace, biology, and new energy, which can serve both military and civilian purposes. The planning, building, and utilization of infrastructure in these fields should be dual purpose too. Major problems should be dealt with promptly so that military and civilian resources in the emerging sectors can be more compatible, better coordinated, and mutually accessible. To further civil military integration, we should put emphasis on implementation. Each and every one of us should have a strong sense of urgency and responsibility. Seize the hour, seize the day as the old saying goes. On key tasks and projects, we should be clear about our respective duties and work hard to resolve problems with force and tenacity as a hammer drives a nail. The quality and benefit of integrated development should be under strict supervision and assessment. Relevant assessment systems, standards, and codes should be formulated. All provincial authorities and central departments should focus on the major decisions and plans of the CPC Central Committee in both thought and deed. With a stronger sense of mission and responsibility, we should have the courage to brave dangerous rapids, challenge vested interests, or move the cheese, so to speak, address thorny problems, cross over hurdles, and blaze new trails. We should strengthen overall planning in the fields of management, policies, major reforms, infrastructure construction, and pilot demonstration projects. Major problems crossing departments, sectors, and regions should be resolved with effective coordination. All provinces and equivalent administrative units should expedite the establishment of leading offices for civil military integration and improve functions and work mechanisms in order to lay an organizational foundation for the implementation of this major policy of the CPC Central Committee. Continue to strengthen our military. August 1st, 2017. Part of the speech at the rally marking the 90th anniversary of the founding of the PLA. History ever moves on. In the world today, the international situation is undergoing unprecedented change. In China today, socialism with Chinese characteristics is advancing in all respects. We have a solid foundation and a golden opportunity and are full of confidence in realizing the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation. At the same time, we must be fully aware that our way forward will not be smooth. Severe challenges, risks, difficulties, and problems will continue to arise. These historical features presage a great struggle. At this new historical starting point, we must not forget that it was the heroic people's military that lifted the Chinese nation out of misery and liberated the Chinese people. We feel more strongly than ever that in order to achieve national rejuvenation and better lives for the people, we must speed up the building of the people's military into a world-class force. We should stay true to our mission, keep moving forward, and make steady progress in strengthening our military with Chinese features. 
to strengthen our military, we must uphold the party's absolute leadership over the military and make sure that the, that the people's military will always follow the party. The party's leadership is a fundamental guarantee for the strong cohesiveness, affinity, creativity, and combat capability of the military. The party's absolute leadership over the military is a defining feature of Chinese socialism and a major source of political strength to the party and the state. It is fundamental to the building and strengthening of the military. However, the situation changes with the times. Our military will always be the military of the party and of the people. The military should enhance its political integrity, develop a better understanding of the general picture, follow the core leadership of the CPC Central Committee, and act consistently with Central Committee policy. It should safeguard the authority of the Central Committee, uphold the fundamental principle and institution of the party's absolute leadership over the military, and follow the command of the Central Committee and the Central Military Commission. On this matter of overall importance, we should remain especially clear-headed and unequivocal. There can be no wavering, no hesitation, and no ambiguity. To strengthen our military, we must stick to and develop the party's military theory and constantly open up new horizons for the military theory of Marxism and for military practice in contemporary China. The key to the continuous growth of the people's military is the guidance of advanced military theory. Since its 18th National Congress in 2012, our party has put forward a series of new visions, new ideas, new concepts, and new requirements on national defense and the military, as the, party th as the party's thinking on the development of the military in the new era has taken shape. The military should fully implement the party's military theory, educate the troops in the party's thinking, and make steady progress. There is no end to practice, to seeking truth, and to theoretical innovation. Developing our military forces is a pioneering endeavor. We must always adapt to new situations, respond to new challenges, solve new problems, make breakthroughs in theory, and courageously explore new ways in practice to enrich and develop the party's approach to developing the military, so that the truth of Marxist military theory applied in practice will shine brighter in China. To strengthen our military, we must always focus on combat readiness and build an elite military that is ready and able to fight and prevail at all times and under all circumstances when the call comes. In safety, we cannot forget about danger. In peace, we cannot forget about turbulence. We have a wide range of measures and options to safeguard peace maintain security, and deter war, but the military option will always be the ultimate guarantee. The military is forever a fighting force, its vitality being its combat capability. The military should be ready to respond to adversity and crisis and adopt a worst-case scenario mentality. All should focus their attention on training and preparation for war so as to ensure that whenever they are needed by the party and the people, they can respond promptly and readily to any scenario, at any time, and under any circumstances, and always emerge victorious. The military should implement the party's military strategy in the new era. All men and women in uniform should study military affairs, wars, and strategy in order to understand the laws of modern war and the laws of command and control, and thus enhance combat readiness. We must enhance combat readiness through rigorous training in real combat scenarios. The military must enhance its ability to fulfill diverse military tasks. The Chinese people cherish peace. We will not engage in aggression or expansion, but we are confident that we will defeat any aggressor. We will never allow any person, any organization, or any political party to split any part of the Chinese territory away from the country at any time, in any form. 
No one should expect us to accept anything that damages our sovereignty, security, or development interests. The military must resolutely safeguard the party's leadership and our socialist system, our sovereignty, security, and interests, and regional and world peace. To strengthen our military, we must count on political work, reform, science and technology, and the rule of law to upgrade our national defense and modernize our military in all respects. We must put into practice the guiding principles adopted at the new Guaitian meeting. Political work is the lifeline of the military, which will play an essential role in fostering a new generation of revolutionary forces dedicated to the party's ideals and leadership, capable of winning wars, fearless, and equipped with moral integrity, with men and women as strong as iron in their belief, faith, discipline, and sense of responsibility, so that the nature, purpose, and character of the military will remain unchanged. We must drive deeper all-round reform of national defense and the military, overcome prominent institutional, structural, and policy barriers that constrain their development, improve and develop the system of a modern military with Chinese characteristics, and accelerate the development of a system of Chinese-style modern armed forces that are capable of winning IT-based warfare and can accomplish their missions. We must fully implement the strategy of strengthening the military with science and technology, the essence of which is innovation. We should follow developments in military science and technology throughout the world. Plans and designs should be forward-looking. Research and development should focus on strategic, cutting-edge, and disruptive technologies, which will contribute to the building of the military and the improvement of combat capabilities. The military should be well aware of the rule of law. The establishment of a military law system has to be accelerated so as to facilitate a fundamental change in the command and control of the military. To strengthen our military, we must promote deeper civil military integration and build a national strategy and ability to advance such integration. Upgraded as a national strategy, civil military integration is a major result of China's long-term endeavor to coordinate economic development with national defense. It is a strategic decision based on our overall national development and security interests, and a key measure to deal with complex security threats and gain national strategic advantage. It is of the utmost importance to strengthen centralized and unified leadership and uphold a holistic view of national security and the military strategic guideline with a problem-oriented approach in this new era. The top-level design should be an overall plan for the integrated use of infrastructure, key key facilities, and resources based on essential requirements. Meanwhile, we should reform institutions and mechanisms, integrate military systems with concrete elements, and improve the general standards for both military and civilian development, so as to put in place a comprehensive and highly efficient network of integration. We should strive to promote the coordinated, balanced, and inclusive development of the economy and national defense. National defense is the defense of all the people. The modernization of national defense and the armed forces is the common undertaking of the party and the people. Party committees and government departments at all levels should be fully aware of the importance of national defense and create a favorable environment for, take active, take an active part in, and give their strongest support to the reform of national defense and the military. To strengthen our military, we must always remember that serving the people wholeheartedly is our fundamental purpose. We must stand side by side with the people so as to be trusted, supported, and loved by the people. Our victories would not have been possible without the support of the people. 
the military is deeply rooted in the people. The power of people's war lies in the great power of the people. The military should keep the people in our hearts, keep the sacred duty of fighting for the people in our minds, and safeguard their peaceful lives and labors. We should carry forward the worthy tradition of close ties with the people. Go through thick and thin with them to consolidate the ties, and always be the defender of the interests of the people. The military should take an active part in local economic and social development, being ready to serve the people with concrete actions and take on responsibilities in the face of urgent, difficult, dangerous, and heavy tasks. The unity between military and government, and between military and people, is the unique political strength of the party and the military. All party members, all men and women in uniform, and all the people of China should carry forward the great tradition of mutual support between people and military, and consolidate the rock-solid relations between military and government.